There's Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. And I'm Jaden. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. We are so glad you are with us. We appreciate you for your time that you would take and learn the word of Yah, the most important thing you could do, because your soul is the most important thing you can save. So we appreciate you guys for taking the time to learn what our Messiah, what our, his path was, what he wanted us to do, and what the most important thing is in our lives that we can do. Yeah, not just our Messiah, because this is the Yahoo and the Torah channel, but more like what Yah's desires are for our lives. The Messiah was simply there to reinforce everything that his father had delegated and that he said, and the will of the father is the will of Messiah Yahushua. And we say Yahushua because the name Jesus was not in, the letter J wasn't invented until the year 1529, which was... Uh, you know, 700 years ago. So we didn't even have that name until 700 years ago. Okay, and we are back. The team is back. We're kind of a little tired today, but we are going to make it through this right here. Um, and one thing that we didn't do from the last time is we had 22 commandments that we need to go through real quick. And so we got all these dialed in, thanks to Nicole. She is a mighty warrior for Yah, and I really appreciate her working through that. Okay, so here we are. Commandment 20 is there are no mighty ones before Yah. Commandment 21, do not bring Yah's name to naught. 22, keep the Shabbat. 23, honor your parents. 24, do not kill. 25, do not break wedlock. 26, do not steal. 27, do not make false accusations against your neighbor. 28, do not covet anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from rock that a tool has touched, a metal tool. Do not go up to the altar by the steps. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false report. Do not follow multitude of evil. 35. Don't judge unrighteous against the poor. 36. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. 37. Help the animals of your enemy. 38. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. 39. Take no bribes. 40. Don't oppress a stranger. 41. Give your land rest in the seventh year. 42. Rest on the seventh day. And that would actually go... I was going to say, when you said the other one, that needs to go up with the other one because mm. I didn't realize we already had that commandment up there. Right. And so this, 42, will go up higher. And that was from our list of day that we, we pecked out. Okay, so 42 is, and 43 is going to go to 42. 42 is going to go up to a sub-command because we already have um, things about the Shabbat. So 43, which is really 42. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feast of Yahuwah. Do not mix blood and leavened bread. Do not cook your goat in his mother's milk. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends before you. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Make no covenant with other Elohim. All right, so that is where we are at. So we are literally, 40. we have 49 commands right now that we have. And we are right now in the book of Exodus, chapter 25. And we will begin. And Yahuwah has spoken to Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yisrael, that they bring me an offering... Of every man that gives it willingly with his heart, ye shall take my offering. I'm sorry, guys. I have two dogs up here that are getting ready to duke it out, and I got to get down, Panther. So okay. where yours says an offering, mine says contribution. Yes. So speaking of the children of Yashrael, that they bring me a offering or contribution of every man that gives it willingly with his heart, ye shall take my offering. And this is the offering which ye shall take of them, gold and silver and brass. And purple, uh, and blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine linen, and goat's hair, and ram skin dyed red, and antelope skins, and chitim wood, oil for the light, spices for anointing oil, and for sweet incense. Now, what are we talking about here, guys? Or is this for? Uh, this is a kind of a contribution. It's almost like a donation thing for a project, and uh, we'll find out later that this is actually what everything they used for. To make the uh, temple and make the uh, temple they had in Jerusalem when, he, when they made this. Right. And so we have ram skin dyed red, antelope skins, and chitim wood, oil for the light, spices for anointing oil, and for sweet incense, onyx stones, and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. According to all that I show you, 
after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. And they shall make an ark of, what, what's your guys' word? Acacia. 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 Acacia wood. This is, uh, I don't even know how to say this without like dropping S-bombs. Uh, so break an ark of acacia wood, chidium wood, I would like to say. I hope that's a C sounding. Uh, two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And you shall overlay it with pure gold, Within and without shall you overlay it, and shall make up on it a crown of gold round about. And you shall cast cast four rings of gold for it, and put them in the four corners thereof. And two rings shall be in the one side of it, and two rings in the other side of it. What are we What are we building here, folks? This is the temple. This is the uh, temple. Is this the ark? This is the ark, and we have the temple. The ark. And the right. Temple. No. This is this is all describing the ark. And so basically, they're taking. We will make an ark of the wood. The uh, acacia wood and, and then we put gold on the outside yep, of it you put the outside of gold and if you guys we have a little arc here and it's i think it's there's a tiny one up there plastic yeah it's a plastic i get it but it's a uh it's a tiny plastic replica okay and there's four gold rings in it right mm -hmm. and why are the four gold rings in there so uh, you just slide the poles through, through it right so you're, you're not supposed to touch it with your hands we learned that later and i think leviticus right and so two rings in it be on in the one side of it and two rings on the other side and you shall make st staves of chittim wood and overlay them with gold. And you shall put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark, that the ark may be born with them. What do you say? Does you say staves? I said the poles. Poles. So poles, staves. So basically, it's a big box with rings on it that you can put the uh, poles through it. And um, the staves shall be in the rings in the ark. They shall not be taken from it. And you shall put into the ark... The testimony which I give you, and you shall make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And you shall make two caravim of gold of beaten work shall you make them in the two ends of the mercy seat. Okay, so what is this saying right here? Uh, so basically we're going to put two angels on top, two like inscriptions of angels on top of the... Uh what is called, in our translation, is the lid of atonement, not the mercy seat. Lid of atonement. And so, and then also we have the, the cherubim here. They're cherubims or the, the angels. Okay. So you have basically two angels that are facing each other, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And, um, and make one cherub on the one end and the other cherub on the other end. Even of the mercy seat shall ye make the cherubim on the two ends thereof. And the cherubim shall stretch forth their wings on high covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another. Toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the caravan be. And you shall put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and in the ark you shall put the testimony that I shall give you. Okay, what are we seeing here? What is this? What is the mercy seat? So the mercy is the lid that goes on top of it. It is like the... Uh the lid, it, then it has two angels with their wings facing outwards, facing, to, and they're supposed to face towards each other on the and, lid. And so your guys' don't say mercy seat? No, ours no, is the lid of mine atonement. Says, mine says mercy seat. Mercy seat, and we have lid of atonement. So okay. it's the lid. It's the piece that goes on top. Okay, and then he says, he continues on, And there I will meet with you, and I will commune with you from above the mercy seat, from between the two caravan, which are up on the ark of the testimony, of all things which I will give you in commandment unto the children of Yashrael. Okay, so what what is, what is this? He says that he will talk with us above the lid of the ark. Yeah, it's like a phone booth, like some sort of a phone booth or some sort of communication tool or something of the sort that Yah is going to talk between his two caravan. And everything that was written here that Moses writes in these two rocks here that he is given, he is supposed to put down into this thing. He is supposed to seal these into this thing. It's supposed to be like something extremely holy, like a, almost a relic type thing where children of Israel will know that is like the power, where the power of Yah sits. Yeah, what else was supposed to be in this ark? Do you guys remember? Oh, uh, I think the Torah. Was never there a Torah in there? Uh, the, Torah, the Torah that goes in it. The uh, the manna. Remember the manna? The pint of yeah, manna goes, it goes in there. The, the, uh, and there's something else. in the pint, the Omer. I believe there's yeah, something the else in there. Yeah. Something else he has them put in there later. Okay, and so he will meet us there. So 23, you shall also make a table of, what is your saying? Acacia. Acacia wood. Two cubits shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and the cubit and a half the height thereof. And you shall overlay it with pure gold, 
and make there too a crown of gold round about. Okay, where's a crown of gold go? I said a molding of gold all around. Oh, okay. So the lid or the box has it's supposed to be cut like overlaid with gold, like a golden ring around it. The more we build this box, the heavier it gets. The more yeah, this is definitely a heavy box. I what does it say? A rim or a molding. A rim or a molding. Okay, so we have a uh, the rim or a molding all around. Yeah, I feel bad for Leo. It's had kids around for seven days around Jericho. <laughs> yeah, well, they probably swapped off. And you shall make unto it a border of a hand breadth round about, and you shall make a golden crown to the border thereof round about. And you shall make for it four rings of gold, and put the rings in the four corners that are on the four feet thereof. Over against the border shall the rings be for places of the staves to bear the table. And you shall make the staves of chittim wood and overlay them with gold that the table may be borne with it. And you shall make the dishes thereof and spoons thereof and covers thereof and bowls thereof to cover withal of pure gold shall you make them. And you shall set upon the table showbread before me always. And you shall make a menorah of pure gold of beaten work shall the menorah be made. His shaft and his branches, his bulls, his knops, and his flowers shall be the same. Now it says our menorah is a his, right? Um, his, yeah, so his shaft and his branches, his bulls and his knops, these are all about the menorah. They're all his. Knobs, mine says ornamental knobs. Does it say his? It's ornamental. Yeah, mine His says shaft, his branches, his bulls. And you should make a lampstand of clean gold. Lampstand is made of beaten work. Its base and its shaft, its cups, its ornamental knobs, and its blossoms. So it refers to it as it. It doesn't refer to it as a. This is. This is like direct. a masculine here. Yeah, it doesn't direct you as a direct gender. Okay. And six branches shall come out of the sides of it. Three branches of the menorah out of the one side and three branches of the menorah out of the other side. Three bowls made like unto almonds with a knop and a flower in one branch and three bowls made like almonds in the other branch with a knop and a flower. So in the six branches that come out of the menorah. And in the menorah shall be four bowls made like unto almonds with their knops and their flowers. And there shall be a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, according to the six branches that proceed out of the menorah. Their knops and their branches shall be of the same. All of it shall be one beaten work of pure gold, and you shall make the seven lamps thereof. And they shall light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it. And the tongs thereof and the snuff dishes thereof shall be of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold shall he make it with all these vessels. And look that you make them after their pattern, which was showed to show you in the mount. All right, so let's discuss this. So we do not have any other commandments in this. Yeah, yeah we're not really allowed to build this. This was a special thing for yeah, the, we don't even know what it looked like the lights to build here. We know what it looks like. It just described it what it is. Yeah, yeah. there's definitely you can definitely put it together. What is the point of what is the point of this? If we're not supposed to have any um, idols, or we're not supposed to have anything, what is how is this not an idol? This is meant to be a sanctified holy thing, right? Because Yah has gold. He has gold from the beginning that he gave Adam and Eve. If you read the book of Adam and Eve, and gold was something he considered to be his own creation, his thing. It was his thing. So gold, when you overlay it with gold, you're overlaying it with something that he considers, that, to, that he likes, that he considers well. And that's what he wants. Is that It's not meant to be an idol. It's meant to be that's something that represents a creation right. of Yah. Yeah, so we don't worship the ark. It's not a thing of worship. This kind of is like a, Yah's decorations. If you worship Yah, yeah, Yah has his own set of decorations. This is Yah's world. house, and he has decorations where he wants You them. see later, he has a certain bit of favorite colors. We have, he likes blue and purple and scarlet. And he overlays it, all that throughout the entire... Uh, temple that he creates um he likes his own decorations his own form of decorations holy decorations what color is his favorite color i think blue probably blue blue or purple i would say I'm, one I'm of those closer to blue. there's more blue i think you're referred to more blue he has more blue in there it could be scarlet though maybe it's right. just blue is more designer friendly right so that is it we finally have the band back but we're extremely tired so we're putting this down tonight and so we will actually put this up tomorrow so that Eli and our uh, commitment to Yah is fulfilled. And, you know, it's like it's something we're just, we're really, it's really important to us that we, um, if we give an oath to Yahuwah, we need to fulfill it. And so this is one thing our family wasn't doing was taking the time out to do this 
consistently. We were doing it when we had a chance and the rain wasn't here, but now it's, it's literally going to cut into our day, which is actually fine because we should be doing this anyway. We should be going over the law of statutes and commands of our creator, and we should be writing them up on our hearts, our minds, our doorsteps, everything that we have. Gentlemen, you're not talking a lot. What can we do? Do we have anything else? Uh, Are you guys good? There's not a lot of commands here. There's a cool design thing he has here going on. Um, the next few chapters are kind of like this. It is nothing command that we can do because this was all meant for them and the temple was indeed destroyed back in 7080 and he will be bringing a new temple for us when the Israel returns. So this is more of a historical chapter for us. This isn't a command chapter, but uh, right. yeah, just kind of a cool thing to look at. The Yah has his own design. He has his own personality. He puts into his own decorations, his own house, right? He puts right, his own... Right. And, life into it and how many were at, were at Exodus 25 here let's take how many do we have in Exodus I can't believe 40 okay so we are halfway through it uh, almost halfway through it right over halfway. over halfway through it and we have essentially 49 commandments as this so I guess before we wrap up um, these commandments here do you guys have any of these commandments that are too hard to bear what is the hardest commandment that you guys have out of this any anyone have any maybe the sev take the year off of the whole seven you like don't plant anything this absolutely sucks okay um this program google really you know for being a, a, a saint satanic company they're doing what they're doing they uh completely are botching this completely and if you guys would please stop touching the tablet and taking this out, that would be absolutely great. <laughs> okay, um, so with that, everybody, I think that we are going to call this. Um, we are dead, we're beat, and we are going to put this away. So it's not too exciting, but thank you to everybody who's, who sat around our table and listened to this. And um, it's not always going to be exciting when we're reading the Torah. We are uh, peddling through it the best that we can and trying to get everybody through this. We're trying to get this list solidified. And solidified so that we are able to tell people exactly how many commandments of Yah there are. And to this point, I don't know if there's anybody that has this list. And so it is of kings and such that cite and write the Torah. And so it is something interesting that we can uh, we can actually do. And um, so here we are. Anything else? Anyone else? Uh, read your Bibles. Uh, stay in prayer. Hopefully we see you guys tomorrow, and uh, yeah, just keep reading the Torah for you guys yourselves. Don't just let us read it for you guys. Take your time and read it for yourselves. Understand it. Yeah, absolutely. This is not. This is this is to spoon feed folks as well as spoon feeding ourselves, because these are very important things, and I, we don't even have these qualifications yet because we don't know the amount of commands there are. So we're learning along with you guys, and. You know, it is what we do as a family. It's what Yah's people do. When the kingdom is here and the kingdom comes, we'll be keeping these same kind of laws. Uh, we may not be sacrificing or doing any of this stuff, but I would uh, expect you'll find an Ark of a Covenant somewhere in one of the, the kingdom to come and, and probably the temple and, and what we're describing right here. So I guess keep your eyes peeled to the sky, read your Bible, study the word of Yah, and never, ever stop seeking Yah. Salvation begins where, Jaden? Uh, at the stake at Yehoshua. What do you mean at the stake? It's a cross, right? Uh, I don't exactly know. I didn't actually say what exactly it what was. What is it? It's what, a, how did our Messiah get hung? On what? A tree. A tree. That's what it says. He got hung on a tree. And why did he get hung on a tree, Eli? Um, because... Speak in the mic, son. Um, because everyone that is on a tree is cursed, and he took the cursings. He took the sin of the world, which was the curse of the Torah. So he took the curse of the Torah on us as the perfect he lamb would, he to would, save us from our sins. He, like Paul says, in all of you read all of Paul's books throughout all of his uh, letters, it says he had redemption of sins. He was redemption for us breaking the Torah because without, we were dead without redemption. All we do is sacrifice an animal, and we were just a pardon. It wasn't true forgiveness until we had Yehoshua. So when we plead the blood, we have true forgiveness of that sin we have committed. So, and that, that's exactly right. And and why did we continually have thousands and thousands of sacrifices because back in the day? they were sinning and they needed to pardon their sins now because if not, they would be dead in that side of the Torah. Why would our creator want us to kill beautiful animals consistently and bleed them out? It's a very violent I, process. I would say it's because it needs to be perfect. It needs to be like for that sin, it costs it. For that sin, you must know for that sin, it costs a life. Whether you weren't a farm or not, you had to pay for it. There was, there was always, there's always consequences to sin. There was whether you had to pay for it, you had to take a life of your own beast for a sacrifice. Yeah, but we have a lot of animals, and it it, it feels almost at some level it's extremely cruel that the animals had to take 
a pardon for our, our sin, right? It had, they had to be the sacrifice for it. And so why do you suppose that it ends up like it is? We're slaughtering thousands and thousands of beasts. Um, why does this, why, why does our creator want this? Um, or why did he want this? Well, he said he didn't. He said he would rather have us obey the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And so he doesn't. He doesn't want us to keep killing animals. He wants to stop sinning. Just do it. Just do what he tells us to do. But he, we had to have this for some kind of redemption to know that we were truly sorry for our sins. Okay, because I'm not getting what I'm looking for here. Why do you think that? What? What's? What is a? Why would our creator take this as? Uh, you know, he doesn't come and destroy you. What are you doing for him that he would not do this? Feeding his Levites? Um, not feeding his Levites. He like, scent. He may like the smell. Ah, there we go. That's what we're touching on to. Okay. You're so, basically appeasing to him. You're basically appealing to him, waving your peace offering to him. But it's, I don't believe it is the actual killing of the animals. It is something else after which. It's like what the you, fragrance that comes The up. fragrance, right. And there's certain things that he says. You don't mix certain things. You don't add things into this. Right, it's he recipe. had a special recipe that uh, we'll find out Each later sacrifice. as we go through the book that says, here's the ingredients, but do not, nobody outside of Levites is allowed to make this or they're cursed for well, life. Well, okay, so let me let me take this. The the people of the world say we're on a round ball spinning. We're We're a tiny little dot in the middle of a galaxy, out in the middle of nowhere. Where, why would we be killing the animals and letting our creator smell them? Where would he be possibly? Uh, that, he's right, right next to us. I think he's right near. I think he's with us at all times. Yeah, you know the Bible says the foundations of the earth. It, it says it's unmovable, and we've been told and we've been lied to our entire lives that we're spinning through. We're an endless, vast system, and that there's other lives out there, and this all this other stuff. More than likely, if our creator is able to sit and smell something like cinnamon rolls coming or something that you would smell in a kitchen, something that you're close enough that you're able to see this. So if our creator is close enough, why would they tell us our creator's long ways away? Uh, so maybe we keep, keep us away maybe from him. So keep us sinning keep, so he doesn't think we're like consistently seeing us and seeing our sin so that we can do what we want because he's not watching us. It's like it's like a kid, right? A kid's not going to sit there and steal the cookies out of the cookie jar while his parents are right behind him. He's going to wait till his parents are gone to steal the cookies. And if we're insignificant, we're just like a little speck and there's all these other worlds and all these other things out there, then, you know, how could our creator really truly be... Um, interested in us right how could there be so much more in the world in the universe just look at but he chose us he created us i don't know if there's other plan they might be stars that he talks about in jash how the fallen became some stars and stuff yeah and i i believe that our creator is sitting outside our dome i believe that we are a flat land i don't know what shape it is and it's not really up for arguing i can tell you as a a microwave engineer for most of my life there is no curve and so if we cannot get past the curve there's no reason to even argue about the rest of the stuff that we've been lied to and our our government lies to us our leaders lie to us our politicians lie to us everybody lies to us so somewhere something is a, a miss where they tell us that we're just a little speck blowing, you know, we're, they say we're spinning a thousand miles an hour one way and, and hundreds of, you know, they were just, we're all sorts of wobbles. So it is very important that people would understand that our creator is probably sitting directly outside of this dome. Watching us. Watching us. Not only watching us, but if he's able to smell the fragrances of com what's coming up out of there, then it's very it's something we should all take note of, that our creator is literally watching this. What we are doing right now is a resume for the kingdom to come, right? We are, we are literally fighting the forces of darkness our creator sitting outside he knows what's going to happen but he's going to see who's going to be obedient who wants to be obedient and yes the blood sacrifice is a vile evil it's not evil but i mean it is something that if you've ever killed an animal like that you understand that it is not something you unless you're a psychopath or a, just a a blood blood killer guy it's hard to kill animals regardless and so um it isn't I don't believe it is about the killing of the animals. It's about the blood, and it is about the the fragrance that we are able to appease Yah. And if we have constant cinnamon roll smells or whatever it is, you know, when, when you're cooking animals and you're cooking the kind of dough and the kind of oils and stuff that he has asked us to do, it's going to probably smell pretty good right. as well as feed his guys. So that's the point I'm getting at. All right, gentlemen, that was a um, little off the venture path, and I think we're good. Anyone else have anything?
Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, just read your Bibles. Have a great evening and shalom. Yeah, have a, it'll be a good morning for you guys. Oh, so good I, morning for you. Yeah, guys, have yeah. a good day for everybody out there. And some of you guys are actually at night. So, yeah, whatever it is, whatever time it is, much love to everybody. And we are out. All right, shalom. 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 I screwed us up.